Why News with Angelo Castro III and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Human Rights Victims Claims Board will soon release the second batch of recognized victims under the 1972 martial law. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. Sa Toro Campo and Dani de la Fuente both received the partial amount of compensation as legitimate victims of human rights violation under the regime of former President Ferdinand Marcos. Both of them experienced torture and imprisonment that time. Yung 79 hours na ako ay naka-blindfold ng masking tape ha, sa buong ganyan. Nagkadikit-dikit yung aking mga pilipit mata. Tapos, electrocution. Kinuryente ako. Actually, hindi naman yung pera ni Nabo namin. Uh, yung mismong ano, pagkilala uh, at uh, pagtukoy sa diktadurang Marcos bilang may kagagawan dun sa maramihang paglabag sa karapatang pantahol. Danny will use part of what he received for the education of his child while Satur will share the amount to his grandchildren. The two are part of the first batch of claimants released by the Human Rights Victims Claims Board. Of the 4,000 included in the first list, around 600 recognized claimants are yet to receive their compensation. Ayaw nilang kunin, gusto nila sabay-sabay na nilang makuha yung buo. Meron namang nag-appeal at uh, yung iba naman subject of oppositions. Meanwhile, the board announces that the second batch of recognized claimants, which numbered to around 1,700, will be out soon. Chairperson Lina Sarmiento said the board has reviewed 72% of the total 75,000 applicants. The board is expected to complete the distribution of the 10 billion pesos fund by May of next year. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Marcos family finally speaks of the issue of their plans to return their wealth as what President Rodrigo Duterte previously announced. Grace Casin tells us why. Ilocos Norte Governor Aimee Marcos expresses high hopes that President Rodrigo Duterte can help them to finally end the decade-long charges that their family is facing. Tiwala kami sa Presidente na siya ang makakapagtapos ng uh, dekadekadang uh, kaso at uh, yung pamilya nag-uusap pa subalit na uh, nasa kamay ng mga abogado. Just recently, President himself announced the Marcos' intention to return their alleged ill-gotten wealth. But the Lady Governor refuses to disclose the total amount of wealth they're planning to return. However, Buhay Party List Representative Lito Atienza claims that former First Lady and now Ilocos Norte Congresswoman Imelda Marcos has told him that the Marcoses are willing to return tons of gold deposited in different parts of the world. Narinig ko na yan directly from Congresswoman Imelda Marcos. When I was mayor, sabi niya, gusto kong ibalik yung gold dito at ibigay, ang, ibigay sa gobyerno yan para mapawi na lahat ng utang ng bansa natin. Sabi ko, why don't you do it? Sabi niya, humahad lang isang superpower. Ano ko ba estimate niyo sa gold na yan? Well, something like 7,000 tons. For her part, Governor Marcos refuses to comment on the matter. Hindi ko alam. I think it's best that the lawyer respond to all these queries. Thank you. According to Makabayan Block, there has to be conditions in returning the said wealth. Paano na yung criminal liability? Sabi nga natin, hindi naman pwedeng uh, solid, tapos wala na, quits na tayo. No? Dahil meron tayong mga batas, may mga batas na lilabag dito. Dapat ibigay, ibalik ang... Uh, kaban ang ya yamang minakaw at panagutin. Kung sino man yung dapat panagutin, itong Marcos family. According to former Congressman Neri Colmenares, returning of Marcos wealth is not the answer to the financial problems that the country is facing. He says it will just aggravate the country's problem on immunity. Well, actually, ang kawawa dyan, yung sunod, lalo na ang sunod na henerasyon. Mm -hmm. Kasi ang gagawin na ng susunod na mga public official, ganun na ganun. Mm -hmm. Na makawa nila yung susunod na henerasyon, ubusin nila yung ekonomiya ng bansa. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. So, Marshall, the victims insist uh, that the Marcos family's return to the government of their alleged stolen wealth is not enough. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. 
Bayan Moon Party List Representative Neri Colmenares is against the plan of the Marcos family to return to the government parts of their ill-gotten wealth if in exchange for this is their evading of the punishment for crimes against the country. Colmenara says the wounds of the 1972 martial law will never heal if the victims will not attain justice for the atrocities they suffered under the Marcos regime. There is no moving on or reconciliation without accountability and without justice. And of course, without uh, returning the ill-gotten wealth. For the former lawmaker, the issue on the ill-gotten wealth of the Marcoses centers not only on the stolen amount, but also on their liabilities. The group called ex-detainees Laban sa Detencion at Arresto or Celda also calls for punishments for the Marcoses. Meron pang mahigit sa 10 billion US dollars. E ngayon ang nasasabi lang yung tungkol sa mga gold at saka iba pang pera. Meanwhile, former Bayan Muna Representative Saturo Campo says it is never right for the government to accept the Marcoses Golds as a form of contribution of the family to the Philippines. Kasama sana ako na yaman yun eh. Kukumpis kayo nyo. Gagamitin. Hindi yung tatanggipin mo bilang donasyon. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Councilor Nilo Small Abellera, who is labeled who is labeled as a member of the Davao Group, faces the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee today. In the midst of the hearing, Senator Antonio Trillanes gets into a heated argument with Senator Richard Gordon. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. During the Senate hearing in today's Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing, Customs Broker Mark Naguba points Davao City Councilor Nilo Smolabellera as one of the members of Davao Group and had received 5 million pesos as enrollment fee for the fast release of his cargoes in the Bureau of Customs. Abellera refuted the allegations. Hindi po ako member ng Davao Group, sir. Nang sinasabi niya. He gave you 55 million pesos according to Mr. Naguba, a supposed enrollment fee. Did you ever ask for an enrollment fee? No, sir. According to the Davao councillor, he didn't know alias Jack who was referred to as the middleman between him and Taguba in their exchange of the 5 million pesos Greece money. But he admitted to have met Taguba. How do you know that that Jack is the same Jack that he's referring to, the one you know? Because sir, yung sinasabi po niya na nakita niya ako, maliban ako dun sa 5 million, totoo po yun. Na pumunta, pumunta nga sila nung Jack. Senator Trillanes, meanwhile, brought the exchange of text messages between Taguba and Etita Nani last March, where the name of Attorney Man Scarpio, the husband of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, was mentioned. Itong si Man Scarpio, uh, bakit lumabas ito dito sa text mo? Nababanggit lang po nila sa akin. Na member din siya nung Davao Group. Nasa likod din siya ng Dapa Group. Yun po ang sabi nila. The Senator wants to subpoena Carpio in the next hearing who link in the Davao Group. This is aside from the subpoena to be sent to Davao City Vice Mayor Paulo Duterte. Senate Majority Leader Senator Tito Soto, however, intervened and questioned the objectives of the probe. Pag-aralan natin mabuti kung kailangan ibitahin natin yung mga kausap niya noong January na wala namang kinalaman dito. Ang investigasyon nito at ang mainit na mainit ang dugo natin is yung 604 kilos na siya po. It was at this juncture the Senator Trillanes got into a heated argument with Senator Richard Gordon. Uh, Binabadger na yung uh, uh, yun nag... Sasabi. Are, are you accusing the chair or Senator Soto that we're badgering the witnesses? Well, uh, if you felt, uh, if you feel alluded to, then that, no, no, that's no, 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 you that's better. You know, you're so fond of making names here. Well, okay. like making general statements. Okay. Well, so if yeah. you want to make general statements, you better prove it. Oh, to Mr. This is the Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Oh, Mr. Chairman, this is not a cockpit of chismish. We are here investigating real things. Yes, well, definitely. Of dal dito na okay. hindi mo Mr. Chairman, you are out of order. Trillanes called the hearing Committee de Absuelto. Gordon, on the other hand, threatened to file an ethics complaint against the Trillanes and will call the sergeant at arms if the younger senator will not stop his tirade against him. This led to an exchange of personal attacks between the two lawmakers. Every time he doesn't like it, he will conduct a coup. 
and then he will be forgiven and then he will go to the Senate and then he will conduct another coup and then he will be forgiven again. And ito, nag-barricade ka sa subik just to, mean, just to hold That's on correct. to your position? Gordon, however, apologized for the whole incident. The committee report is expected to be released on Monday regarding on probe on billion peso shabu shipping from China. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Attorney Larry Gadon is confident that his pieces of evidence are sufficient to impeach Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Grace Cassin tells us why. Two Supreme Court justices have expressed their willingness to testify against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno, according to Attorney Larry Gadon. He claims he is still waiting for the confirmation of a female justice who is willing to testify against Sereno. Gadon is the complainant of the impeachment complaint filed against the Chief Justice. According to Gadon, if the committee would allow the said justices to stand as witnesses when the hearing begins, it will strengthen his complaint. Yung mga statements nila, mabigat yon. Coming from a member of the Supreme Court, mabigat yon. Because that is a first-hand knowledge and information, no? Aside from the original copies of Sereno's Statement of Assets, Liabilities, and Net Worth, or SALEN, Gadon claims to have 40 original documents that contain the alleged anomalous transactions of the Chief Justice. He also claims that a total of 42 congressmen have already signified their intention to sign and support the complaint. However, if Congress will allow it, they can easily refer it to the impeachment court having enough number of votes. Ang target talaga dyan dapat is around uh, 98 and uh, uh, according to my uh, discussions with uh, the congressman that I have been um, uh, coordinating with, uh, uh, they can easily get that number. Pero mukha yatang gusto muni nilang dumaan ito sa uh, House Committee on Rules and sa uh, Justice Committee. Kaya ang mangyayari, Baka hindi muna nila ipapirma yung 98 dito. Meanwhile, other congressmen believe the impeachment process will just delay the deliberation of important bills in the lower house. This is a political proceedings. So we have to consider so many things. Ano ang pulso ng bayan? Gusto ba ng bayan? Gusto bang alisin ng bayan? Yan po, ikukonsider po namin yan. At pangatlo, dahil political proceedings, ikukonsider din namin yung mga trabaho namin sa kongreso. Uh, maaring mamadaliin yung pagpapasa ng budget para mapag-usapan na siguro itong impeachment na to. Other Solons worry that it may bring negative implications. Hindi namin susuportahan ito no, dahil nakikita natin yung pattern sa ilalim ng ni Pangulong Duterte at ng kanyang administrasyon na yung mga kritiko ng Pangulo uh, yung, lalo na yung mga individuals and institutions na nagsasalita uh, kontra kay Pangulong Duterte at sa mga patakaran niya, uh, yun ang tinatarget. But Malacanang distances itself from the impeachment issue. According to Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abelia, the executive branch respects the separation of powers in the branches of the government, particularly the exclusive power of the lower house to receive and process an impeachment complaint. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales defends her term of office at the office of the Ombudsman. Rosalie Cost will tell us why. Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales today is one of those who graced the Ramon Magsaysay Awards 2017 at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. She is one of the special guests as a past awardee of Asia's premier prize and highest honor. Meanwhile, Morales addressed the recent statements of President Rodrigo Duterte against her, including her alleged questionable term as the Ombudsman, as well as the alleged selective justice in her office. Morales says she is just following what the law states in Ombudsman Act of 1989, Section 8.3. She must serve the seven-year full term. She was appointed by former President Noy Noy Aquino and she will finish her term next year. It says that when the incumbent ombudsman uh, leaves the office by reason of death, removal, resignation, or disability, permanent disability, the overall deputy ombudsman shall be the acting ombudsman until a new ombudsman 
is appointed who shall serve for a full term. Sinusunod lang namin yung batas na yon. Morales also answered President Duterte's criticisms that her office practices selective justice. The president was alluding to the PDAF cases filed against the members of the opposition in the past administration, which Morales says have already had testimonial evidence. Majority of the cases they filed were against the members of the opposition of then President Aquino. We give priority to high profile cases, high government officials, officials who hold supervisory positions, or uh, cases that involve a uh, huge amount of money or big property. The Ombudsman says her office inherited more than 19,000 cases, most of which dates as far back as 1999. So far, Morales says she is proud to report that they only have around 6,000 pending cases. Meanwhile, Ombudsman Carpio Morales reveals that the preliminary investigation on the multiple charges filed by the camp of the alleged Davo Dead Squad member and self-confessed hitman Edgar Matobato against President Duterte has started. But she inhibited from the case because she says it involves her nephew's father-in-law. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The Civil Service Commission or CSC emphasizes the obligation of government officials to declare in their statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth or SAL-N their share of wealth in their families. Ray Pelayo tells us why. It is the obligation of government officials to declare a statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth or SAL-N. But the Civil Service Commission or CSC emphasizes public officials should also declare in their salen the amount of their properties in their family's wealth. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na porket ko own diyan, eh hindi mo na i-declare. Kailangan i-declare mo pa rin yung portion ng property that belongs to you. O kasi sa iyo yun eh, so dapat ilagay mo sa salen. It can be noted that the Vice of Commission on Election or Comedic Chairman Andres Bautista accuses him of hiding some of his wealth which reaches to almost 1 billion pesos. The poll chief says he did not declare in his sal N anything about his family's wealth. Bautista's asset is 176 million pesos in 2016 sal N. The poll chief is now facing an impeachment complaint in connection with his allegedly questionable sal N and hidden wealth. The National Bureau of Investigation is now conducting a separate investigation on the matter. The Kamalak chairman has initially said he is ready to defend himself from the said accusations. Meanwhile, the CSC plans to launch next year an electronic sal N or e sal N. With this, government officials can file their statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth online. Kung naka, nakalagay na sa computer mo yan, yearly kung kailangan mong mag-file, i-retrieve mo lang yan. Tapos kung meron kang babaguhin na figures, babaguhin mo lang yan sa napakadaling paraan. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Transportation plans to adopt the transportation system of Singapore. Robbie de Guzman explains why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, admits having difficulty in resolving the problem on traffic in Metro Manila. The MMDA has already implemented several systems, but these have not resolved the problem on traffic. One of the plans of the Department of Transportation, or DOTR, is to copy the transport system of Singapore to address the traffic woes in Metro Manila. Under the Intelligent Transport System of Singapore, traffic personnel can see the situation on the roads through a centralized monitoring center. From there, they can immediately respond in case there is a problem. This enables them to immediately provide traffic advisories to motorists so they can avoid the heavy flow of traffic. Hindi lang ho reduce yung traffic, but malalaman mo at certain particular time of the day, ilan dapat ang sasakyan dun sa kalsada. Yung uh, in, out, in, out. Hindi na pwede, pwede kang pumasok sa terminal kung anong oras mo gusto. Uh, teknolohiya, magmamando niyan, uugma ba dito yan? Pag-aaralan natin. 
Earlier this morning, DOTR and the Singapore Cooperation Enterprise signed an agreement on the plan of the Philippines to adopt the Singaporean system. Yeah, I think so. The, the, the whole idea for the study is to ensure that we look at it on a holistic, holistic sort of a view where all this uh, other supporting infrastructure we, we will also have to look at as well in terms of how the public sector, I mean the public uh, transport infrastructure needs to be improved and also to support the sort of policies and, and systems. So, gagawin natin ito with the aid of technology. Uh, alam naman ninyo na medyo huli na tayo when it comes to technology. Makakatulong ito. For now, the DOTR will begin studying the plan but has yet to set a timeline for its implementation. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Next on Y News. Council of the Asian Liberals and Democrats visit Senator Laila de Lima at the PNP Custodial Center. The Philippines formally accepts the hosting of the 2019 Southeast Asian Games. Y News will be right back. The National Bureau of Investigation has filed new charges against four policemen over the killing of 17-year-old Kian Lloyd de los Santos. Charged with murder, violation of domicile, and planting of evidence were Caloocan PCP-7 Precinct Commander Chief Inspector Amor Cerillo, PO3 Arnel Oares, PO1 Jerwin Cruz, and PO1 Jeremias Pereda. NBI investigation revealed that it was PO3 Oares who shot Kian while in a kneeling position. NBI concludes that if there was a shootout, the victim should have sustained gunshot wounds on frontal parts of his body. NBI also says it is highly improbable for Kian to conceal a 45 caliber pistol and two alleged sachets of shabu as he was only wearing boxer shorts at the time. Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido has asked President Rodrigo Duterte to extend his stay in Osami City. Victor Cusare tells us why. Many residents of Osami City are worried over the decision of President Rodrigo Duterte to transfer Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido to Iloilo City. Many of them are regretting the unfinished service of the said police chief. Even Espinido is having regrets. That's why he wants to ask President Duterte to give him more time to finish the campaign against illegal drugs he started in Osamis City. Kung pwede lang, sana hindi. No, hindi pa. Nandyan pa yung kapatid ni Aldong, mamangki ni Aldong, na mga leaders, no? Leader ng, leaders ng organized crime groups. However, he notes he is not complaining about his transfer. Espirito, meanwhile, has this message to the residents of Osami City who want him to stay out of fear of the Parohinogs. Papakita lang na gusto sila sa trabaho ni Espirito. Ah, nagpapakita lang na ang mga tao gusto sa trabaho ng polis. Espinido, meanwhile, warns the Parohinogs who are in hiding and to their allies who are still committing crimes. Karon, singlo na mo sa mga tao. And I am representing from the government, from the people, specifically in Osamis na mga tao. Para pagpangita ninyo, pagpaningil sa inyong mga binuhatan, na kamura ang nalipay, Inyong gihurot ang kwarta sa panudanan sa siyad para lang sa inyong personal interest. Espinido is personally supervising the creation of a group he calls Al Samasa that will help authorities address criminality in Osamis City. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Integrated Bar of the Philippines or IBP calls on the Philippine National Police to make public the pre-operation and spot reports on its one-time big-time operations are from August 13 to the 20th. Teenager Kian De Los Santos was among the 95 reportedly killed in the police anti-illegal drugs operations in Metro Manila, Bulacan, and Cavite. 
A number of witnesses in the Kian Slay who were able to talk to some IDP lawyers claimed that the teenager was forcibly taken by the police and was dragged to an alley where he was killed. The IBP says the PNP should be transparent on their report, especially now that the incident has cast doubts over other police operations. The IBP says making the appeal is part of their commitment to defend the rights of the Filipinos. The Police Community Relations Group sees the death of Key and Lloyd De Los Santos as a challenge to, to uplift the declining satisfaction rating of the Philippine National Police. Monokson will tell us why. The Philippine National Police admits that the death of Kian Lloyd de los Santos affected the image of the whole police force. The PNP received negative feedbacks from the public when Kian was killed by three Caloocan police. The incident served as a challenge to the Police Community Relations Group in uplifting the declining satisfaction rating of the PNP. Yung nangyari po kay Kian, I think that is a learning or a... Or a Parang we will learn from that. The more that we are going to educate our personnel, the more that we are going to follow strictly the standard operation procedure. The PCRG is the lead agency in the PNP that establishes communication between the police and the public. Last March, the anti-drug war got a plus 66 very good rating in the SWS survey. This is 11 points lower from the plus 77 excellent rating from December 2016. Ceremonia says the PCRG needs the help of different organizations to regain the trust of the public on the campaign against illegal drugs. The program is good, pero kailangan po namin ng media para ipropagate at uh, ipaalam sa publiko na hindi po negative yung tokhang na programa. Meanwhile, former PCRG Director Gilbert Cruz will be assigned in Region 8 in Samar and Leyte. Cruz said even though he is in Region 8, they can still implement PCRG projects to help disseminate and establish communication with the public. Kung ano yung dapat sa isang lugar, yun ang gagawin nating PCRG approach or community approach. Uh, yung mga nagawa rito sa uh, Camp Krami uh, through the Police Community Relations, siguro uh, palalakihin lang namin o gagawin namin on a regional basis. UNTV is one of the partners of PCRG in creating harmonious relationship between the police and the community. The PCRG program Police at Your Service is seen every Saturday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on UNTV Channel 37. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Council of the Asian Liberals and Democrats pay Senator Laila de Lima a visit at the PNP Custodial Center. The members of this group come from different parts of Asia. The group wants to find out for themselves Senator Laila de Lima's condition and appeals for the immediate release of the lady senator. Hi, hello! And we have come, of course, to try to seek the release of Senator Laila de Lima. Uh, we have a lot of respect for her and of course we talk to many Filipinos and we think that she has been very unjustly treated. The group also questioned what they claim as a slow pace of the Lima's case. Called member Emily Lau leads a delegate along with Janat Balaguru, the chairman of Called Women's Council. The all-female contingent of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police sent to Marawi City is facing a bigger challenge. Nel Maribuhok explains why. Psychological care, emotional wound healings, and teaching about the importance of peace are just some of the aspects the female soldiers and cops sent to Marawi City will focus on in terms of the recovery and rehabilitation of the now war-torn area. Deputy Chief of Staff for Civil Military Operations, Major General Melquiedes Feliciano says, The latest views the teenagers in the city are now having is a big challenge for the all-female contingent. It can be recalled that the Philippine Sports Commission recently said that when some teenagers in Marawi City were asked about personalities they idolized, they answered the Maute terror group. Because of this, the military is now concerned about the extent of the influence reached by the ISIS-inspired terrorists. Bata kasi madaling ma-exploit no? and alam naman natin na yung uh, terrorists, they also have their 
other organizations supporting the terrorists doing this uh, ideological uh, activities to influence yung lalong lalo na yung kabataan The general admits that this kind of influence poses bigger challenge for them than rehabilitating damaged houses and buildings in the city. This is more challenging than the physical uh, rebuilding of Marawi, uh, the social aspect sa ika nga of rebuilding Marawi. The military officials also notes the Maute group intends to recruit teenagers to increase their number. This is why he says the military vows to do all it can to prevent it from happening and to save the youth from a dark future. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A candle lighting ceremony was on the site of the deadly night market blast in Davao City. Bernard Dadis tells us why. It has already been a year since the bombing of the Rojas Night Market took place on September 2, which killed 15 individuals and injured 69 others. As commemoration, the local government of Davao City held a candle lighting in the blast site. It was attended by the victims and the relatives of the fatalities. Uh, sa mga victims, uh, nagpadayo ng ato ang support system sa Ilaha, Dunay Trust Fund sa tanan mga uh, financial assistance na gihatag para sa Ilaha. So gigamit nato to um, para mahatagan sila og livelihood. In line with this, Chief Ancillary Service Unit Rodelio Polikit assures of stricter security in the Dabao Night Market. Uh, since uh, presence sa itong TF Dabao o PNP personnel nato from the CPO, ang atong safety and security maayog yun din ha. Wala tayo na matikdan nga ana kung nili ang ato lang uh, kauna yung ma-observe di ha kanang disagreement, a little disagreement between sailors and vendors kanang ilang mga pwisto-pwisto. Pero kung mga lang sa mga kahibulungan ng mga dautan na tao, wala tayo na matikdan pa din. The military and police are still deployed in the area to prevent the repeat of the deadly blast. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Various groups complain about the seemingly abandoned government housing units in Calamba, Laguna. Jun Soriao tells us why. I will ask you, soldiers and the policemen, bitawa na lang ninyo yan, ibigay na lang natin sa kanila. Total mahirap sila. But I promised you, gagawa ako ng mas maganda. May tubig na at may electric na pagpasok ninyo. This was the pronouncement of President Rodrigo Duterte for government troops. Just like the past administration, it cannot be denied that the incumbent one also attended to the needs of soldiers and policemen. Their salaries increased, their children get scholarship grants, and they also offered with housing units. However, in over five years, Many complaints are now surfacing regarding several seemingly abandoned state housing projects. This is why some groups like Kadamay decided to forcibly occupy government housing units in Pandi and San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. In an interview with the National Housing Authority or NHA on the program Bawal Ang Picon Get It Straight with Daniel Rason yesterday, the amount the government spent for the AFP and PNP housing programs was revealed. 16 billion po. 16 billion? Billion. Six for 63,499 units for the AFPPN. One of the housing sites being complained of is the Lake Breeze residences in Laguna. Based on the figures of the NHA of the more than 2,000 units built in the housing site, only 421 are currently occupied. This means 80% of the houses are unoccupied or abandoned. Each unit is worth 260,000 pesos, meaning more than 400 million pesos of the amount spent for the housing project might have been put to waste. This amount is aside from the other AFP and PNP housing programs of which the government has allotted 16 billion pesos. It was in 2012 when housing units in the Lake Breeze residences were completed and turned over to the NHA and PNP AFP Housing Board. However, until now, none of the two government offices accept accountability for the abandoned houses. Open kami doon kung meron talagang magsasampa po ng kaso, 
NHA is open to that. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police has this request. Sana po sa NHA at sa Cadrebella Per, once we issued the certificate of awards, ay sana ay gawin na rin nila yung nararapat na gawin nila regarding sa unit. Many are hoping that the said problem be resolved at the soonest possible time because in the end, groups like Kadamay might forcibly occupy the said housing units which are supposedly for government troops. Jun Suriao, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. The next two years will be more than busy for the Philippines in the field of sports. Victor Cosare tells us why. A grand and colorful closing ceremony has been presented by the host country Malaysia in the conclusion of the 29th edition of the Southeast Asian Games. The athletes have once again marched in a parade for their final bow in the regional games. All the volunteers who helped in the successful conduct of the SEA Games were given praises. Malaysia also showcased their colorful dance performance and their rich culture. Also during the closing ceremony, Malaysia has formally turned over to the Philippines the hosting of the 30th edition of the SEA Games in 2019. May they display cheerfulness and concord so that the sports torch may be carried on with even greater eagerness courage and honor for the good of humanity throughout the ages. Philippine Olympic Committee President Jose Cuanco accepted the SEA Games Federation Council flag from outgoing President Yam Tunko Sri Imran and it was waived by Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano who will also serve as the overall chairman of the 30th SEA Games Organizing Committee. Afterwards, the Philippines showcased its tourist spots that the athletes can visit in 2019. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Coming up on Y News. A fully functional solid gold toilet is on display at the Guggenheim Museum in New York. And Wish FM celebrates third year anniversary in a star-studded tremendous thanks party happening tonight. after this break. At this very moment, wishers are enjoying Wish 107.5's tremendous thanks party. Leslie Dongbowen is in Eastwood, Libis in Quezon City to tell us why live. Go ahead, Leslie. Yes, Jago, Wish 107.5 listeners also called as wishers is are still enjoying the whole day celebration of the FM station's third anniversary right here at the Eastwood Central Plaza along with the celebration wish covery the freshest online singing competition reveals the wishful 20 who will advance to the competition proper. The resident reactors admit having difficulty in the selection process since the wish covery pre-qualifiers are all talented. I was surprised nga eh na bakit parang ngayon lang sila lumabas. Kaya ako nagulat na ang dami pa palang eh, hindi pa napipiga ng mga contests natin, available contests, singing contests natin ang uh, talent in this country. Wishcovery was formed not only to find the best singers in the country, but also to support our own music. We're taking our support for OPM one notch higher. Because we're not only playing in the radio station OPM, but we wanted to also, as our tagline in radio, uh, the gateway to the world, we wanted to also discover great talents that will represent Philippines in the globe. Since we're promoting OPM, the choice of songs na, na bibigay natin sa, sa kanila galing sa ating catalog ay all OPM. So they will sing all original Filipino music. So we witnessed uh, the live exclusive performances of some of the country's finest singers including Barbie Almalbes, Bukoy Drilon, Jake Zyrus, and Michael Pangilinan. And what we are hearing right now is a, a song number from KZ Tandingan and TJ Monterre. Well, the 
what I can say is that the energy of the wishers right here is still up despite the whole day full of activities. And the only uh, performance that we are waiting for is uh, the finale performance coming from the band Sponge Cola. That's the latest right here from the Eastwood Central Plaza. Back to the studio. Thank you, Leslie Longbowen, reporting live from Eastwood, Libis, Quezon City. Danish rock band Michael learns to rock serenade their Filipino fans for free before their concert in Manila. Leslie Longbowen is back to tell us why. Get the songs of Michael Learns to Rock. In its almost three decades in the industry, the soft rock group from Denmark already sold 11 million records. MLTR has performed in different places in the world, but their Filipino fans have a special place in their hearts. And it's always been uh, uh, fantastic. Every time we went here, we've, we've been pretty amazed by the uh, reception and by the people and the beautiful fans. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm just again looking forward to, to, uh, to hearing the Filipinos sing mm -hmm. along because, you know, you, this audience in, in the Philippines, they're actually the best singers uh, among all audiences uh, where we ever played. And as they returned to the Philippines, the renowned band serenaded their fans through the one and only Wish Bus. They first performed The Actor, which has become number one in music charts in different countries, including those in Asia. Oh, I'm not an actor, I'm not a star. Fishers also sang along to one of their smash hits, That's Why You Go Away. But I'm not the man, your heart is missing, that's why you go away, I know. They were also amazed by the idea of the Wish Bus. This is actually the first time we try something like this first time to be yeah. on a on a bus on, on, on a studio bus on like, a studio like this. bus it's that's really, right it's a really good idea and and with the like the, yeah, the you... window so people can see what, what's going on and from outside the band's eternal asia tour is now taking place at the kia theater in kubao quezon city which started at 8 p.m i won't forget the way you're kissing so strong we last for so long Leslie Longbo and Human TV News and Rescue Philippines Those are the reasons behind the news August 31, 2017 I'm Angelo Castro III Reasons we delivered to you as they unfold I'm Darlene Basingan Because we need to know we will always ask why Thank you for watching Why, why News, news?